Hey guys, okay, chapter one, division one, chapter one, being in time. The exposition of the task of a preparatory analysis of Dasein. So the first thing is uh, the distinction between objective presence and existence, E-N-Z, existence. I'm just going to say existence, that's um, basically what that is. Um, so... The distinction here is between the existence of things and of Dasein. So the world is kind of divided into two different types of being, two different kinds of being. Um, and uh, and the first of them is is Dasein, the the being in which um, the essence, the being, the essence of which um, lies in its existence. That is, that is, that is Dasein. That's that, that being that is concerned in its very being, about its being, whose essence is existence. Um, and that type of being, that is Dasein, that is existence, is opposed to this other type of being, which is objective presence. And that is just things... That's just things, inanimate things. Not just inanimate, though, things also like plants. And I think Heidegger would say most animals fall into that category, objective presence. It's, um, it's the category of things for whom existence just means being present. There's no, um, there's nothing kind of uh, deeper than that. As he says, it's, it's things that are indifferent to their being, as opposed to Dasein, which is concerned in its being, about its being. Things, objectively present things, are indifferent to their being, which is to say they're neither indifferent nor non-indifferent. They're just they're completely incapable of that dimension to their being. Okay? So there's uh, so there are those two types of being in the world. Um, and regarding Dasein, the uh, characteristics of Dasein are possible ways for it to be. <clears throat> and these uh, these possibilities. So we'll, Heidegger will call them possibilities. Characteristics of Dasein are its possibilities. But an important thing to note here is that Dasein doesn't have its possibilities. It is them. And this is tied in, tied back in with that idea that the essence of Dasein lies in its existence. It is, it is what it is. It's not um, indifferent in its, it's not indifferent to its being. Uh, and objectively present things then, when it has the equivalent of characteristics or possibilities of uh, of Dasein, the equivalent for objectively present things or attributes are what Heidegger will call categories. So categories are the attributes of things, objectively present things, things that don't have the being of Dasein. And uh, the Another um, thing that Heidegger mentions in this first section is that the way he's going to investigate Dasein will be in its regular mode of being, which is to say in its average everydayness. That's what Heidegger calls it. And so um, average everydayness just means the exactly what it says, the, the everyday life that we have. That, that's what Heidegger is going to investigate. He's not going to investigate any kind of extraordinary um, events or, or um, happenings. He's, he's, he's just going to approach Dasein through its regular, ordinary, everyday interactions in the world. And he says... Um, 
What is ontically nearest and familiar is ontologically the farthest, unrecognized, and constantly overlooked in its ontological significance. And that's why he's going to focus on these um, average, everyday events, things that, 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 that happen just in, in the normal course of life. He also talks about Descartes and science in this first chapter. And um, he criticizes Descartes for failing to investigate the sum, as even though uh, even as he investigated the cogito. So in his cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am. Um, Heidegger, uh, Descartes, obviously investigates that cogito, goes into the the cogito in some detail, what it is the that conscious subject. But he doesn't investigate the sum, which is to be, the, the verb to be. He doesn't investigate that in the same manner. And um, so starting, as Descartes does, from a given ego or a subject, completely ignores and misses out on this more fundamental, phenomenal content of Dasein. It's, um, it's kind of like... The distinction between being at, at an ontic level and an ontological level, and Descartes missed that latter by by driving straight into consciousness. He hasn't he hasn't investigated the um, ontological dimensions of the cogito. And he also points out De, uh, Heidegger, I should say, also points out that the sciences as a as a as a, a means of comparison and classification can't give us genuine knowledge and this is because science is basically concerned with just ordering the manifold without providing any real understanding and this is because there's there's always something phenomenal beneath and presupposed in that ordering and uh, and this deeper more as Heidegger would say, more primordial manifold is world, which he will identify, which he will investigate phenomenologically, and it's 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 that on which all of science is based. Science is like an ontic description; it's it's an ontic investigation into the world. It investigates things in the world. Um, and even where it where it goes kind of beyond that and tries to investigate say how the world came to be or you know uh, how the how the universe came into existence or you know, multiverse theories or brain theories or whatever it's still lacking that deeper um, phenomenal content which is which is is captured in this ontological investigation that Heidegger's about to undertake, even when you know, even when science does ask those grander questions, not just about things in the world, but when it asks about the universe itself, it's still missing something because it, it's missing the 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 being that's questioning the universe itself, and that is what is it. It's a, a, a presupposition, a hidden presupposition of science that it, that it never questions. And that's where Heidegger is driving at. Okay, so that's chapter one. I'm going to stop there with chapter one and, uh, and move straight into chapter two. So chapter two being in the world in general as the fundamental constitution of Dasein. <clears throat> so being in the world, let's start with that. What is that? Being in the world, it, it's all hyphenated. So being in the world. Um, and that is, as, as the, uh, the title suggests, the fundamental constitution of Dasein. And it, it's, a, it's a unified phenomenon. So it's, it's all... It comes together. You can you can't separate anything 
any of the uh, the individual components that make up being in the world. And there are three of them that we're going to look at. We're going to look at them in in isolation. Um, but Heidegger stresses that even though we're looking at each um, part of this this unified phenomenon being in the world, they come together. They are united together. He's only breaking it up so that to um, to explain what being in the world is. When any time we think about being in the world, it's it must be with all of these features locked in, tied in together. Um, yeah. So the three parts of being in the world are in the world, which is the Heidegger will analyze as world and worldliness, the being, which is Dasein, the who, and being in. And this is kind of like the relation between the two, being the Dasein and the world. And uh, for the rest of this chapter, Heidegger just gives a um, a brief kind of analysis of the the ontological importance of this inness that's in the being in the world. So this in he wants to focus on and just have a look at what being in actually means before we get into a a breakdown proper of being in the world. <clears throat> so being in is uh, well, first of all, it doesn't mean anything like being present in or being present together with other beings. Ontologically, these are categorical characteristics of object, objectively present things, objectively present beings. Being in, as it relates to the being of the being uh -huh. called Dasein, means to dwell near or to be familiar with. It's a being together with the world in the sense of being absorbed in the world as opposed to a being next to each other of objectively present things. So it, it, he's just kind of dividing uh, or distinguishing again between the way that, that Dasein is in the world as opposed to the way that objectively present things are in the world. Again, a focus there on that, on that in. And um, <clears throat> Dasein's not in the world in the same way that things are. It's not just kind of present here, present in, next to, or on, or beside, or any of those, any of those kind of preposition, prepositional um, ways of being in. It's a, it's a dwelling. It's a being familiar with. It's, um, it's being absorbed in the world. So the, the way of being in for Dasein is fundamentally different from the way that objectively present things are in the world. That's the first thing to, to note. And because of this, a consequence of this is that only beings like Dasein can touch other beings in the existential sense of encountering them. Um, you know, uh, two, two objectively present things, say a book and a table, can be touching, but in the existential sense of, you know, where touch is that kind of encountering a, a, a deeper, kind of more intimate um, way of touching, the... Um, Things objectively present things just just can't. That is that is not the type of thing that can have that deeper experience. And uh, again, related to that, objectively present beings are therefore worldless. They have no world. Only Dasein, only the being that is concerned in its being about that being, can have a world. Things don't have a world. Um, yeah. Uh, and again, just some more of kind of the, the consequences of this. Being in is not a property which Dasein sometimes has and sometimes lacks. Dasein is always already absorbed in the world in the way of being in. 
and this is kind of this is quite important actually it's not being in is not something that that um you know i'm sometimes engaged in the world i'm sometimes um absorbed in the world but sometimes i'm not no i'm always always already absorbed in the world there's there's no way of uh there's no way to to get her, to get out of that I'm I'm always already fully absorbed in the world. And this is really the direct opposite of of the the Cartesian or even the scientific idea of the subject which kind of exists and then discovers the world around it. Um so if you think about, you know, Descartes dualism between uh, his dualism um, consciousness and and uh, you know, extended things matter um, he had this idea that they were separate so the the consciousness the cogito could exist first and then find itself in a world and then discover you know the objects things that are around it. Heidegger's idea is, is different from that. It's always already in a world. There is no there is no um, separation. There's no there's no way of separating that out. There is no <clears throat> Dasein first and then the discovery of the world around it. If for Dasein to be it means it it, it means being absorbed in the world in the way of being in, the way that we're discussing now, that ontological, existential um, means, the existential, that existential way of being in. Um, facticity is something else that comes up here, and, and it's, the idea really here is, if, if you've, if you've um, read Sartre, Jean-Paul Sartre at all, Facticity is basically the same concept. Sartre makes more of it than than Heidegger does, um, but Heidegger talks about it. He talks about Dasein. The way Dasein can also be thought of, however, as being in the world in a merely objectively present way. So even though we've just said you know Dasein is always already absorbed in the world in that way of being in, it can also we can also imagine it just as 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 being in the world as purely objective presence but you know just a body we all have bodies Dasein has a body and we can imagine just that body just being another thing like any other objectively present thing but that objective presence is fundamentally different from the factuality of objectively present beings so even though we can imagine Dasein just as another objectively, objectively present being, it's not. It's never, it's never, it's never that, <laughs> how many times? It's never just um, objectively present. And, and the way we kind of, when we think about Dasein as objectively present, just a, just a body, just another thing amongst things, when we think about it like that, we don't, we can't get there by just disregarding the specific existentials of Dasein. The existentials being those um, existential categories, existential characteristics, possibilities. So we, we can't just take Dasein as, as um, the being who, who's, who's who cares about its being and its being, and then just subtract all of those features that make it kind of special, make it that, that give it this being in the world characteristic, and then find we're left with just an objectively present thing. That doesn't happen. And the reason why that doesn't happen and can't happen is because in order to disregard those features, those existentials that make up, that characterize Dasein, we already need to have them. So it's kind of like that thing, you, you, you 
just you can never reduce Dasein to an objectively present thing because in order to 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 carry out that process whereby you reject uh, whereby you reduce Dasein to just a thing in the world, you have to be already more than a thing in the world. You already have to be a Dasein. So. Um, so even though we we can think about it Dasein in that way, it's just another thing amongst other things. It's not the same as being purely, merely, objectively present. But anyway, this um, this way we can think about Dasein as being objectively present is what Heidegger calls facticity, and he asserts, um, as we've kind of talked about already, it, it always presupposes and is built upon the existential nature of Dasein. And basically what it is, is it's just kind of a, a physical, if you like, limiting factor on Dasein's possibilities. It's like brute facts of Dasein's existence that, that, that limit its possibilities. Okay, the next thing is taking care of. And this is... Um, Heidegger is basically giving away the, the end of the story here. This is the, the being. Well, what, we'll, we'll, what we'll discover is actually the being of Dasein is care. This, this, this notion of taking care of. <clears throat> and uh, he, talk, he, he raises it briefly here and just to point out that Dasein can exist in a number of different ways of being in. To, you know, we can use something, we can accomplish something, and many other different different um, modes of being in. But all of these ways of being in have the kind of being of taking care of. It's kind of like an umbrella term. And um, so Dasein is, in its being, always this, this taking care of taking care of um, in the sense of you know we, we use other things we accomplish goals those are those are um, modes of this more kind of umbrella term concept of taking care of and even uh, deficient modes of being in such as neglecting something or omitting even those Deficient modes also come under the existential of taking care of. We um, that taking care of is always the, the fundamental. It's the um, sorry the foundational um, way that Dasein is being in. And again, it's not a property that Dasein has and therefore could not have. It's just it is the way that Dasein is. It's a um, fundamental characteristic of Dasein, and, and existential. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about in this chapter is knowing. And here, Heidegger rejects the Cartesian idea of knowledge as being a relation between an inner subject and an outer object. Subject and object. Um, for Heidegger, are not the same thing. They're not. They're not. Um, they're not not the same as Dasein and world. And that's kind of the way that um, Descartes treated subjects and objects. Subject being the the kind of conscious um, cogito, and the object being material things out there in the world. So subject and object are not the same as Dasein and world. Rather, Dasein is always already outside in the world together with other beings. Dasein is always already in the world in the mode of taking care of. So, um, yeah, we've kind of looked at that already, right? We've, we've seen there is no separation between subject and object. They, they are all to get caught in together in, in this... Um, in this property being in the world there's, there's no way to separate them so right from the start as soon as as soon as um, 
Descartes' idea of knowledge as being a, a relation between a subject and an object, which are separate, straight away that doesn't that doesn't work for Heidegger. That doesn't gel. It, it it's um, it's a contradiction because subject and object are not separated for Heidegger. Being in the world, the being, the world, and the relation between them, it's it's all given at the same time. It's all it's all there together. There is no world without Dasein. There is no Dasein without the world. So um so he doesn't so he rejects that idea of knowledge as being this relation between a subject and an object. Dasein, as we've said, is always already outside in the world, in the in the mode of taking care of. And uh, and basically Heidegger distinguishes two kinds of knowledge on the on the back of this. The first is phenomenological knowing. And this is a way of knowing which stems from Dasein's handling, using, and taking care of other beings in the world. Um, Heidegger calls this a phenomenal interpretation, which is not a cognition of existent qualities of beings, but rather a determination of the structure of their being. And basically all that means is that um, phenomenological knowing is, it's, it's kind of a more intimate knowledge than just um, identifying qualities that, that different objects have or identifying differences between different qualities um, of objects. It's a, it's a knowledge that is rooted in this um, I hesitate to, hesitate to use the word, but almost practical. It's a practical engagement. I think that's the best word. It's an engagement with the world. That's what knowledge is for Heidegger. It's not this kind of abstract um, um, ident identification of you know qualities that pertain to different objects, and and seeing how they relate or. It's it's not looking at things from a distance. It's this active engagement, this involvement with the world, in using, and um, handling, and taking care of. That's that taking care of again. It's that that's what knowledge is for Heidegger. That's the phenomenological knowing, and it's opposed to the ontic or scientific knowing, which. Which also stems, it stems from the taking care of of Dasein, but in a deficient mode, in a, in a, uh, a mode which refrains from handling, or refrains from using. Mm -hmm. And Heidegger calls this, um, Heidegger calls this lingering with. And, uh, and basically this cashes out as a, a looking at, or or perception of something just objectively present. So what we have there is, um, yeah, like I say, this is it's a uh, it's a deficient mode, but it still stems from this original taking care of of Dasein. In fact, everything stems from that, but um, but it's a, it's a refraining from engaging in the world. Uh, and that's this idea of lingering with or just just looking at something um, and then so we have the a perception of something objectively present that perception becomes definition which is then capable of being expressed in propositions which can then be maintained and preserved and that's our knowledge so this kind of knowing is therefore a mode of being of Dasein as being in the world in which Dasein gains a new perspective of being towards a world always already discovered in Dasein. And this kind of knowledge therefore arises from a deficiency in the mode of taking care. And that is basically chapters 1 and 2. I'm going to stop there and uh, I'll catch you next time for chapter 3. Thanks for listening.